Hello, it's DOT Operating Authority with a series on how to start your trucking company, guiding you on the dusty roads of FMCSA requirements and regulations. Today it's all about your work permit. It comes with a couple of names, Operating Authority, Interstate Trucking Authority, Motor Carrier, or Docket Number. But whatever you call it, it's all the same thing. This number, along with USDOT number, allows carriers to cross state lines and allows the government to classify and track them through their system. There are different classifications of cargo and operating authorities when applying for a docket number. Your FMCSA docket number might be referred to as MC, FF, or MX number, depending on the type of authority that is granting. This stands for Motor Carrier, Freight Forwarder, and Mexico Domiciled Carriers, respectively. Today, we are discussing the most common MC numbers. FMCSA requires all four hire operators who drive interstate to have an MC if they are transporting passengers or arranging for their transport, or transporting federally regulated commodities or arranging for their transport. To have an idea of what a regulated commodity might be, think of items in their natural state. Generally, items that have been changed from their natural state are considered regulated commodities. Examples are gold, wheat, and palm oil. Carriers who are not required to have an MC number include private carriers, carriers that transport their own cargo, for hire carriers that exclusively haul exempt commodities, cargo that is not federally regulated, aka items in their natural state, like horses or other animals, and carriers that operate exclusively within a federally designated commercial zone that is exempt from interstate authority rules. A commercial zone is, for example, a geographic territory that includes multiple states bordering on a major metropolitan city, such as Virginia, Maryland, Washington, and D.C. What are the steps to getting an MC number? There are some differences depending on if you are a first-time applicant or an applicant who is already registered for a U.S. DOT number, or if you are applying for an additional authority type only. New applicants can apply for a U.S. DOT number and MC number at the same time. In case you already have a U.S. DOT number and have access to your account, you can apply for an MC number only online. However, if you don't have your U.S. DOT PIN and can't access your account, you can apply and get an MC number in paper version. Also, don't forget to request your MC docket PIN number for the future that can only be delivered via hard copy letter. Side note, you can request your U.S. DOT and MC PIN numbers to match on the FMCSA site to make it easier for you to access your information. To activate an MC number, you need to file both BOC3 form and insurance prior to applying. Only after both are on FMCSA files will they begin processing your application and activate your MC number within three to four weeks. BOC stands for Blanket of Coverage. It features a list of designated process agents who give you an annual service of representation. These guys and girls give your company legal presence in all the states you travel through or do business in. This form allows your agent to accept process or documents on your behalf in case there is an accident in a state other than the one you reside in. To make this easier, imagine your company is based in California, but while driving through Texas, an accident occurs. Court or FMCSA will need a local address to send your letters regarding the process of an accident and legal actions. Here is where your representative in Texas comes into play. The letters go to their mailbox and they send it over to you. Everyone must file a BOC3 form with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, FMCSA, after their MC number is granted. It's a must. You must also have your BOC3 form and insurance in place when requesting reinstatement. Otherwise, your reinstatement request will be placed on hold until the BOC3 and insurance requirements are met. You must reapply for operating authority and pay the application fee again if 
You are a passenger carrier that has been put out of service, OOS, for being an imminent hazard, or you have been out of services due to a final unsatisfactory safety rating, unsat, unfit. Keep in mind the FMCSA will not provide refunds for mistaken applications, so make no mistake. Before sharing your credit card information, check and recheck, or have us check for you. Better yet, let us apply for you. Operating without proper license might result in huge penalties. At DOT Operating Authority, we help companies to make money by saving money. Just give us a call at 888-669-4383. See you next time.